Hey there, fellow maker, you've got Bill in the shop today, and we're talking about logos and 2D digital fabrication. Most of the props around you have some sort of like text or a logo or an image that gets painted or stuck on the side somehow. And I've been doing all of that with my prop work using 2D digital fabrication. I use a free application called Inkscape. It's a lot like Adobe Illustrator, but it's completely free. And I use that to draw not only blueprints for all my props, but specifically any of the fine 2D details you see in the finish. So I've got a bunch of examples here of props that I've made in the past, and I've either used Inkscape and my vinyl cutter to make a stencil, or even cut the stencil out by hand. Or uh, some of these actually have the vinyl decals right on the finished prop. Since we're diving into the subject, I wanted to go a little deeper into the whole digital fabrication side of things. I realize a lot of people get into making by doing stuff with their hands and not on a computer. So there can be a little bit of resistance to jumping into learning a new application. Uh, I love to push the 2D uh, vector drawing applications, again, like uh, Inkscape, or I'm sure there's something on a, a, a tablet or phone. If you know of a phone-based vector drawing application, please share that down in the comments. The 2D thing is just a lot easier to approach than like CAD in 3D, right? Using Fusion to make 3D models or anything. So if you want to get into it, the 2D stuff is a great place to start. That's where I got started about 1 million years ago. I learned AutoCAD when I was like 12 years old. Uh, and that uh, knowledge has propelled me through uh, a lot of the prop making stuff we've been doing. So we're gonna hop up to my PC, load up a fresh design in Inkscape, and I'm gonna show you some tips for uh, drawing things like these simple logos so that you can make stencils or use a vinyl cutter to make some stickers. Let's head up there and get to work. Like I said, all this work happens in front of my PC and a lot of it ends up being just tracing work. Love to put my headphones on and listen to some music while I trace logos. The first thing we wanna do is find a reference image to start from. And I just do a Google image search for whatever I want. I'm doing some Futurama stuff, so we're gonna make the Slurm logo. You can find the one that looks closest to the one from the show and then save that to your computer. Once you've got it, you load up Inkscape and you can start working. Uh, the image you downloaded can get dragged right into Inkscape. Just hit OK. And we can now work from this image. We basically just trace it. If I hold Control and hit the corner there, I can size it up. Uh, although the size doesn't matter much now, we can resize it once it's drawn. Inkscape has layers, just like Photoshop. We only have one layer now and our reference image is on that. So I'm going to lock that layer, and then I'm gonna make a layer, add a layer, we'll call this our drawing. And that's gonna go above that. So now I can't move that logo, and I can just draw on top of it. Most of the drawing I do in Inkscape happens with this tool right here, the pen tool. What you end up doing is drawing a path, and we're gonna use it to make shapes and colors, uh, but can also be used as a path for like a CNC machine or a 3D printer. For Slurm here, we're gonna zoom in and then grab our pen tool and I'm gonna start by tracing the splat in the background. To move my uh, view, I use the middle mouse button to pan around. Uh, and then to draw, I just left click. And you can draw straight lines by single clicking, like that. Now if I hit delete, I can do those over if I want. For these curves, I'm gonna click and drag a little bit and by clicking and dragging, we get a curved line. And I like to put one of these clicks or a node at the peak and valley of each part of the shape, just like this. And I don't have to nail it on the first try. We'll come back later and make it look a lot better. But the first thing I wanna do is just get the path laid out with all of our nodes. There, that is our shape. You can see that once it was filled in, it got some colors. That is the fill and stroke down here. And if I double click those, it'll pop up over here. I can decide what to fill it with. In this case, I'm gonna fill it with nothing so that I can see through the line. 
And then for the stroke, I can turn that off too and make it invisible, or I can change the color or the thickness or make it dots. There's all sorts of options. I recommend you play with this panel over here to really see what options you have. For my drawing, I'm just gonna make the stroke red so that it's really easy to see where I'm drawing. And I'm gonna try and line it up with the edges on my drawing. So let's zoom in a little, whoa, zoom in a little bit. And then instead of using the select tool, I'm gonna to use the uh, node tool here to edit the path I just made. If I select the path, you can see our little nodes showing up. And when I select them, they get these little handles. And by dragging them and moving them, they influence the path that they're next to. So you can start to fine tune your drawing and get it to look closer to the thing that you were tracing. And again, this is where you spend most of your time. So this is when I will be throwing on my headphones and listening to some music and zoning out while I do a lot of tracing. This is a fairly simple design, but I'll show you a more complicated one later and you can see where the, <laughs> where the work ends up coming from. So let's get this outline finished and we'll move on. Sometimes you'll get to a node and it is no longer a curve. It's got this uh, corner. Up here you can change the way nodes behave. So I've got a uh, corner, we've got a smooth one, we have a symmetric one, uh, and so on. I'm just gonna hit, once I've selected it, smooth, and you can see it turns it back into a smooth thing. But if you had a sharp corner, you could hit that corner thing and make it look nice and sharp. For slurm here, we want nice rounded looking shapes. So that is our splat. We've got that drawn. You could do the same thing to draw the little splats around the outside of it. Uh, and next I would come in and draw the text. Uh, I don't know if there's a font that matches this, so I would probably just trace this by hand. And this is what that looks like. So here uh, you can see I've traced all the letters and then I went in and changed the outline and the color. So again, if we go to the fill and stroke, you can see how I've picked this pink for uh, the text. I picked this nice green for the splat. In the background, the splat does not have an outline, so I got rid of the stroke, but I changed the fill to this lovely shade of green. The text, on the other hand, got a black outline. So I set the stroke color to black, and I set the stroke style to, looks like, 0.959 millimeters. So it's a little bit thicker. If I set this higher, it would look like this, if you wanted a thicker outline. Now the beauty of this is it is a vector. It's not a bitmap image. These are all still editable. And what's really cool is I can scale this up without losing any definition. So if I wanted to cut out or 3D print something like this, then I could do it at any scale, which makes this really powerful. Here, let me load up something a little more complicated just to give you an idea of what's possible. This is the Bender Brow logo. I had to do a little more research. I did have to go and find fonts that were pretty similar. That's a whole adventure. I may have to do a whole video on fonts. Uh, but Bender here is a lot of layers of different parts. So part of his body is under this oval and part of it is over it, like his antenna here is a separate piece. So I had to do some fun tricks to get this all to layer, uh, but it worked really well. Now that the image is all done, what can we do with this? Well, for Bender Brow, why don't we just print out the logo on some sticky back paper and we can make a sticker. Let's say we we're making our own Bender Brow bottles. I even printed it on the correct side, hooray! I printed this out on our laser printer. I like doing laser printers for logos because I'm probably gonna weather it if it's on a prop. And inkjets will run <laughs> when you put like paint and stuff on them. So laser printers are awesome for this kind of work. I'm just gonna, I don't have a beer bottle for this. I'm gonna slap this on my water bottle. So I'm cutting out uh, this sticker paper 
I know that my uh, little Inkscape tutorial was a bit brief. Uh, it's a simple program, but it is quite powerful and there's a lot of things you can do. So a few years ago, I made a video course on using Inkscape. It's really helpful for making patterns, even sewing patterns. Uh, all of my early props, I made blueprints, 2D blueprints of them. In fact, most of them are for free over on our website. If you want to download those and check them out, we'll have a link below. We'll also have a link to the Inkscape course. So if you want to learn more about this incredibly powerful tool, you can go check that out. It's only a few bucks. Let's stick this on my water bottle. We, can, we know it's my water bottle because I, I put my name on it and I used <laughs> Inkscape to make that and cut it in my vinyl cutter. There we go. Awesome. Let's try and put it on in a pleasing manner. There we go. So if I was gonna make some Bender Brow to bring to Dragon Con, I have a logo for it. That is awesome. I was inspired to do these Futurama logos because I currently have the opportunity to get some of these printed uh, on a heat transfer machine so that I can make some Futurama themed t-shirts for my Bender project. Uh, so I ended up exporting the vectors as a PNG with a transparent background and that's gonna get printed elsewhere. Uh, we may do a follow-up on that once we get the prints back. Uh, however, there's so much more you can do with these 2D vector graphics. I mentioned uh, stencils before, and here are some stencils that I've made. We have our TGRI logos that we painted on the back of a costume. Here's that Soros logo from uh, Destiny Blaster, some Fix-It logos. And I even dug up these N7 logos that I had cut. I don't even think I cut these myself. I think I had Kinko's cut these out like 13 years ago. So yeah, you can have a vinyl cutter, take those paths and perfectly cut out your logo or your stencil. Here's a, here's a Nuka-Cola one too. We, we used this again recently when we made another Nuka-Cola blaster. Stencils are an obvious choice when it comes to this kind of work, uh, especially if you have a vinyl cutter, but you can also print out your drawing on a piece of paper and then trace that with an X-Acto knife through a piece of masking tape to make your own stencils by hand. And I've done that a lot. The other things I like using Inkscape vector files for is anytime I'm dealing with text, even if I'm working in Fusion 360 to make a 3D model, I will draw the text in Inkscape and then import it into my 3D model and then I can extrude that into objects. In fact, that's how I did all the text on my Rattler blaster here. On top of that, you can just directly import an SVG file into your CNC machine to cut out 2D paths, which makes it just ridiculously powerful. So hopefully, hopefully today, I've got a handful of you to go download the free software and just start drawing some shapes and getting familiar with that software. Again, like I said, we've got a video course that's super cheap that'll get you uh, in the fast lane super quick and you'll be a, an Inkscape pro like me in no time. I really hope this helped you and inspired you to maybe try something new and uh, dive into uh, the world of 2D digital fabrication. That'll wrap it up for me. Thanks so much for hanging out with us and thanks to the support from our Extra Credit Club. Uh, if you want to join and get access to videos early and get sneak peeks at the things we're working on, uh, we'll have a link down to Patreon or here on YouTube memberships. And I implore you to please check it out. We could really use the help right now. Much appreciated. Thanks again for hanging out in the shop with us this week. And we'll see you soon with some more builds from our shop.